Okay, we're going to take a look here at DaVinci Resolve. This is DaVinci Resolve 9 Lite. But basically, for all intents and purposes, it's the same as DaVinci Resolve 9, and you can you can get it for free. They offer it for free on the Blackmagic Design website, and it's definitely an awesome program to use. But you already know that, so let's go ahead and get started. You've opened up the program, and now the first thing you're going to have to do is set up a database. And the way you do that is actually here, this little button. This is your disk database. If you don't have one set up, you're going to want to set one up um, somewhere where it's going to be the most useful. So if you have a solid state drive or something like that, you're definitely going to want to set up a database in on your solid state or somewhere where you know you're not going to move it and get things kind of messed up. So the way you add a new one is you hit this plus button. You'll see this kind of thing show up here. And if you're not working on a server or anything, go ahead and click disk. And that makes it really easy. Name it. Well, you want to name it, and then you'll select the directory, you go and find that place where you know it's not going to get moved around or messed up, um, and then you'll choose that location. And that's pretty, and that's it. Um, and you'll click here, create new database. Once you have new database, that allows you to create users, um, and that'll also store all your stills, all your presets, and the things you're doing while you're color grading. So I've set up my database already. I'm going to log in. Then you'll usually be confronted by a window that looks like this. Um, you'll have projects that you've worked on in the past and then you always have the default projects. So we're going to go ahead and click default project and it'll bring you into the main window for uh, DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve is organized with five different tabs and those are here along the bottom. There's the media tab, the conform tab, the color tab which is where you do all of your color grading, the gallery tab which is where you store your presets and um, your stills, and then the deliver tab, which is where you render. And so the way the workflow works is the media tab is where you look for all your media. The conform tab is where you line them up in your sequence or where you import your sequences from other editors. The color tab is where you do your color grading, and that's where all your work is done. The gallery tab is simply where you can use a resource to pull out different presets or pull out different grades and looks that you found from other locations and the deliver tab is how you render and that's kind of how the workflow goes. So if we were to start from scratch, um, let's take the media tab and say we need to navigate and find some of the media we're looking for. So you use that here in the library. So let's navigate here real quick. So here's the footage that we're looking at for this project. Now one of the first things you want to do before you import any footage or before you actually open that footage into the media pool, first thing you're going to do, click on this gear here. Okay, and this is really important. Scroll down and make sure you click this calculate time code at and make sure you set that to the time code that your footage is going to be. It's also a good thing to also go ahead and click this handle mixed frame rate material button as well. You do that and click apply before you start your project because if you add footage in regardless of what the time code is at the end when you're trying to export it, DaVinci just at this point doesn't really like to change the time code. So you could be stuck having footage that's at 29 frames per second and then you get to the end and suddenly you're stuck and you have to export it at 24 frames per second which can be kind of a pain. So before you even get started make sure you click that gear and make those adjustments so that your footage is going to be in the right frame rate. So let's say we have some clips here. Um, we know that we're going to use these. We can drag these clips into the media pool and this is essentially saying here's all the clips on my computer these are the ones that I actually want to use in my project. Now if we move forward to the conform tab, we'll see um, these things set up in a sequence. And these are always set up in what's called a master timeline. Now you don't actually want to work out of a master timeline. You should always set up a new timeline. So you're going to go ahead and click this plus button and say name your sequence. And so you'll see that it'll create a new timeline. And what this will actually allow you to do now is you can take these clips and you can even edit them. You can move there's, you can move them around. And there actually are a lot of editing tools inside of DaVinci Resolve that you can you can use to edit just like you would in any most other nonlinear editors. So this is a razor edit mode where you can make cuts and you can cut different clips and you can do roll edits and all that kind of stuff within DaVinci Resolve, which is fine. Um, so if you really need to, you can do that. But it definitely is easier to use your own editing program and then import your sequence into DaVinci. So there's two ways you could do that. The first is, say you're using Premiere, you can edit a sequence and then 
output an XML document, which you can then right click up here, import, and then do, you've got EDLs, AAFs, and XMLs. And then you can go and find the XML. You open it up and then it'll automatically find the footage and find all the cuts and find that sequence and import it into your, into your thing here. Or um, if you don't want to output an XML, you can take a video that maybe has already been edited and then you can make those cuts within itself. Um, let me show you what I mean. So if we'll start over here, let's say that you have a video that you've already exported and now you want to go and color grade each of those shots within that video, but it's already baked together in one rendered clip. What you can do is you come down here and say we have a, uh, a video that we want to take a look at. And as you can see, I scroll through this, there's a bunch of different shots inside this video. If I right click on this, there's an option here that says scene cut detection. And then you can go ahead and click start and DaVinci will run through that video and look for the things that it thinks are cuts. And it'll just kind of analyze that footage. Okay, there we go. And you can see these lines here. This is where everywhere DaVinci says, I'm pretty sure this is a cut here. So you start at the beginning, here's the first frame, and this is the frame that came before it. So if I click on this next one, you can see, yep, this is a new shot. This is the old one. And you can go through and just kind of check to make sure this one's not. It'll, oh, no, this one is. <laughs> this one is. And so this is a different cut. And so you can go through, yep, this is, this is a different cut. And you can see, yep, this is pretty accurate. It's getting these cuts right. But if you come down here to the end, you'll notice when I started to fade out with that clip, this is a real cut, but this isn't. This is just fading out, and DaVinci is thinking that it's, it's a real cut. So if you find these, you just go over here to the minus button and start going through here, getting rid of all these cuts that really aren't cuts. That way you're actually going to have clips that cut to actual cuts and not you know, extra, extra clips to deal with while you're working. So if you know that these are all the cuts that you want, then you hit Add Cuts to Media Pool. Go ahead and close that. And then you'll see all these cuts appear. Okay. Go into the Conform tab. All these cuts are here as well, and they also show up down here in your master timeline. But again, you're going to want to create a new timeline. And then you'll be able to you'll be able to go through here and make some more edits if you if you discover that there's a cut that you're unable to fix or there was something that DaVinci didn't recognize, and then you can go through and you'll be able to see each of these different cuts and edit. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the earlier timeline because this is already graded footage and um, we'll put a, a different timeline here. Okay, so here's another project that I've been working on. If you take a look over here in the color tab, you can tell it's already been color graded. And we're going to go in more depth into how to exactly go through the process of color grading in another tutorial. But let's say you've wrapped up, you finished your color grade, you've got everything looking how you want it, and you want to get outside of DaVinci Resolve. And that's all going to take place in the Deliver tab. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, you have presets you can set up and save here to save you some time in the future. And then here's all the, all the uh, parameters that you can set up manually. So you have your containers, QuickTime, you can render it to whatever codec you choose. Um, render job to, this is where you're going to actually put that video file. You can also create an additional output. Um, so say you wanted to have a version of that video that you could watch on an iPad and so it would be optimized for an iPad screen or dailies or any, you know, anything like that. Naming it, and then once you're done with setting up all these parameters, you cl simply click here, add job. It says, hey, there might already be stuff inside this folder. You should want to continue. Do you want to render over that thing if it exists? I'm going to say yes. And you'll see this job of the render queue show up here. So you can actually set up a couple different jobs that the that DaVinci will render. And once you're ready to go, you just hit start render. And it will render through all of those jobs, which makes it kind of nice um, to save some time and, and set up everything so you can render overnight or do anything like that. So it's pretty straightforward. The workflow is definitely nice. Um, I hope this answers some of your questions. If you want to learn more about getting more involved in how to color grade and that kind of process, keep an eye out for part two of these tutorials. Hope this was helpful. I'll see you later, guys.